Okay, so who has used reciprocate or who's tried to reciprocate? Um, is anyone using reciprocate in production? Yep. Um, okay, and is anyone developing with the reciprocate code? Or, yes? Okay, so is anyone developing with any of the other libraries for SIP or yep, RTP or anything else? Okay, um, and who is using any kind of message queuing, like RabbitMQ or something like that, between different components of their VoIP infrastructure? Yep. So these are some of the things I'm going to go through today. We don't have a lot of time, so I'm not going to bother with slides. I'm going to just show you a few things very quickly. Um, so tell me if I go too fast, and we'll try to have some questions as well. Uh, so the first thing we'll look at is this little sketch I've done of what is in the reciprocate repository. Um, is the repository has evolved over time as people have added different libraries to do different things. Um, and the repository layout and the, di the directory tree doesn't actually match the hierarchy of dependencies within the project. So I thought I'd make this up just to make it a little bit easy. We've got to come up with a, a more beautiful drawing, but this is a, an accurate drawing. Um, at the bottom, we've got rutil, which is some very basic um, functions and classes for storing you know, strings and things like that that we use. We've then got stack, which stores things like the SIP message class or the SIP header, and those sorts of basic things that we use. Um, we've got return client, which is for our turn implementation. Um, and we've also got the return server project, which has evolved separately from the client code. Um, so that, that's not always obvious to people when they look at the directory tree. Um, on top of the stack, which was things like the SIP message class, we've got DUM, the Dialogue Usage Manager. And that helps you put SIP messages and transactions together to formulate things like an invite um, and to actually follow the, um, the whole dialogue associated with an invite or a register. So that logic is here. Um, and we take those and we build a SIP proxy, which is repro. So it's a competitor to Camilo. Um, so each of these double circles is one of the daemon processes. The single circles are the libraries. Um, on top of DUM, we've also built a user agent library, which makes it even easier to create user agents. It's called Recon for the conversation manager. Um, so you have a user agent class that can do very high level things like starting a call. Um, and on top of that, we've got Recon Server, which can act as a B2B UA or a conferencing server. Um, we also have a similar a process which is not on there at the moment, which does... Um, does anyone know what that beeping is? <laughs> oh, it's your laptop, okay. I was worried that maybe I've <laughs> plugged in, plugged the wrong thing in or whatever. So anyhow. Um, yeah, so we've also got things like the music on hold park server, which is not in the diagram yet. And that is built on the same recon code, which makes it very easy to build yeah, media-based processes. Um, so that's a quick introduction to the different things that make reciprocate what it is. Um, one of the most developed things is the SIP proxy, repro. So the next things we're going to look at are all based on that repro SIP proxy. Um, so 
So some time ago, I added a plugin API so people can make plugins in C++. They're loaded dynamically so you can build them without rebuilding the whole source tree. Uh, you can keep them in separate projects. They might even be licensed separately as well. Or if you're welcome to contribute them back into the tree as well. One specific plugin is the PyRoot plugin, uh, which is written in C++, but in fact it loads other plugins that are written in Python. So we'll look at an example. These examples always provide a great way to start. Um, in this example, we don't really need a lot of code. We've got an onload method here. So this method gets called once when the SIP proxy starts. And it just sends a log message to reciprocate's logger. So I've only implemented a few API calls in Python. One of the first APIs I implemented was the logger, so we can actually see what is going on in the Python code. Um, so that's what we're using there. So the other method you put in your plugin is provide root. The SIP proxy gets a request or a message, um, and it wants to know where to send it. At the moment, it has various built-in mechanisms for routing. For example, a list of regular expressions that it matches the request URI. Um, this provides an alternative. It, the method receives the SIP method, the request URI, um, all the rest of the headers, and you know, various other useful things. And it can examine all of that, and all it really does here is to log those things. Once again, just to let us study how to write a Python routing method. And then I demonstrate some of the logic that you can put in this uh, plugin. So in this case, if the request is a message request, it's rejected with the SIP you know, 500 response code. And uh, we can also specify a string Alternatively, we can create a list in Python and we just put some URIs into the list and we can return them with this uh, return routes and the proxy will then use those routes to try and deliver the message to the next hop. Um, and just for a little bit more fun, we play around with the headers as well. So here I'm actually adding a a custom header, x-foo. Uh, so you could use that, um, I mean, one example where I've used this is in WebRTC. Uh, the WebRTC front end passes in some cookies and some other variables. We use Python code to, to, de um, to decode those cookies and to extract things like the language that the user is using on the website. And then we put that in a header to help the call center route that to agents who speak that language. So the Python provides a very useful way to join the, the dots in cases like that. Um, just to show one final thing about Python and then we'll move on to the next thing. This is a more detailed example that shows how we can use LDAP from the Python provide root method. So it's a full working example. Um, but the most important thing to note is that Python provides an LDAP library, just as it provides many other libraries that are sometimes useful. Uh, so by using this PyRoot plugin, we can gain access to any existing Python library and use logic or connectivity from that library to help us to make our routing decisions. 
So does anyone have any questions about what we've seen with the plugins in Python? Okay, so I'll move on to the next thing. Um, So this is a server where I test things. So what I've done here is I've added support for AMQP into the registration server. So when someone registers, we send a, a message on a topic with details of the registration. Um, in the config file, we just have to add one parameter to enable that, which is this parameter here. Um, in this case, we're sending to a topic. Um, that's the exact name of the topic. And we can subscribe to that topic from another process using Python or Java or C++ or any other language. Uh, in this particular server, I'm running RabbitMQ as the message broker. So that's the, the RabbitMQ server process. It's installed from the Debian package um, there's one command you have to run after you install it to enable the AMQP 1.0 module because the package uses the older AMQP version by default. Um, and when you enable that, and it's actually, it's enabled now, and we'll just bring up another script. Can you read that at the back there? Can I make it bigger? Um, so that's the log file from this script. This is a consumer that we're going to see now. So it monitors the topic. And we can see that it started running. And we just wait for somebody to register. Now, there are only maybe three users on this proxy. Um, but they're set to register every 30 seconds or so. So hopefully it won't take too long before we get one. <coughs> And we can always cheat. You know, sometimes demos don't work. I actually have a few previous ones up here. That's what they look like. So it hasn't come in yet. So basically, the repro SIP proxy sends out an XML like this on the topic. And the intention of this XML was originally to replicate between multiple uh, repro SIP proxies. But you can use it for all sorts of other purposes. And the Python script is simply extracting the AOR and the expiry. 
So there's the AOR in the XML, and the script is extracting it. So if we go down, we still haven't received any fresh messages yet. We won't bother waiting for one of them to show up. Um, it's just shutting down again now. We'll just open the script very quickly. So this is implemented with the Cupid Proton Python library, which is an Apache licensed AMQP library. Um, you have an on message method, which gets the announcement from reciprocate or from repro. And in this case, it's just logging what was in the, the XML. So. One final thing that I'll show very quickly. We've started making some changes to the database code. Who has looked at the database in Reciprocate, in Repro? Um, okay, so the database started off as Berkeley DB using files on the disk, then MySQL support was added, and then Postgres support. Um, this was a little bit troublesome because the columns we used in the beginning in SQL were made to replicate the columns used in the Berkeley DB. Um, so I've been working on ways to gain access to those because in the Berkeley DB, multiple values are combined into a single column. Um, and when you're using SQL, you want every value in a separate column. So the original solution is these legacy tables and the SIP proxy here, repro. So what I've done is I've added some views which simulate new tables, which let us get into the, um, the data much more easily. So the next thing that will hopefully come out of that, which is not here yet, is that people can make their own web front ends, um, and that will make it a lot more exciting because they can develop those independently. And the other possibility is that people can use the views to share data between multiple products, say between Asterisk or Camillo or Repro, they can use the same back-end tables with views accessing the underlying data. So I'll finish there. Um, does anyone have any questions about any of those things? Or anything else about Reciprocate? Okay, anyone? with questions about reciprocate. Mm, okay, so I have uh, one myself as usual. <laughs> um, how um, easy would be to control it externally? I see you added this for database uh, views, but uh, besides this uh, Python API, is there any like mm -hmm. JSON that you can interact with or um, mm, yeah. from this Yeah, it's a good question. So when you say control, you mean to manipulate the data or? No, it's more like generating like uh, some SIP traffic registration or whatever, mm. or call, cut a call or whatever, you can delete a registration, you know, all this interaction with the um, application. So right now, no, it's a good question because it, it relates to what I've been doing with the AMQP. Right now, through the web interface, we can do things like um, deleting a registration or making some other small changes to the running process, like changing the level of the logger from the regular level, like where it's only logging warnings, down to the debug level at runtime without a restart. Um, so I'd like to enable those commands to be sent through the message queue as well. 
so that's one example of something that's it can be done with a HTTP post, and you can script that. But I'd like to get that working through a message queue as well. Okay, thank and you, Daniel. Okay, did, sorry. Do we have any other question? Or? Okay, quick one. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm learning more about reciprocate. What's what are the common use cases? It's a SIP user agent, but it's it's relaying SIP, right? Because it's not dealing with media. You can use. Mm -hmm. You can do what what kind of use case you can. Okay, you can use it for pure SIP development without any media, <coughs> because reciprocate itself is SIP. It doesn't have its own RTP stack. It does have some code for using it with SIPX Tappy, and we're looking at making it work more easily with other RTP stacks as well. Um, but for SIP applications, you can develop just about anything, a proxy, a user agent. We've got a whole bunch of samples there, like we've got a SIP to XMPP gateway. Um, we've got the music on hold park server that I mentioned before. They're all in the apps directory of the tree. And another interesting one is the registration client. You can give it a list of SIP usernames and passwords, and you run it as a daemon, and it will just register all of those to a destination that you specify. So you can simulate registrations without having phones registering or without using asterisk or free switch to register. So. Okay, yeah. great. For more questions, please uh, approach Daniel because we are a bit too late for this and we need to get into the coffee break so we refresh